All right, what is your full name? Elva Dina Diminuto Asquini. And why did your parents select this name for you? My mother was reading a novel, and it was about a, uh, it was, uh, the place was Switzerland, that, where she was reading uh, this novel, not where she was re where the novel was yeah. taking place, and the heroine's name was Elva, and she liked it, huh. because E-L-V-A is not an Italian name, it's a Swedish name. Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, did you have a nickname? Uh, yes, they call, my sister used to call me Al. Al? Yes. <laughs> wow. Um, when and where were you born? I was born February 13th, 1925 in Trenton, Michigan. And how did your family come to live there? My father worked for a company and it was, um, it was a cement company. I can't remember the name of it. And uh, that's where he worked. Um, were there other family members in the area? No, not in Trenton. Who was, who was in nearby? Detroit. In Detroit? Who was nearby? Grandma, uh, my uncles, aunts, quite a few family lived in Detroit. And what was the house like that you uh, grew up in? That was a tiny home, uh, and they didn't stay there very long. Then they moved to 11677 Abington. How old were you when you, when you moved there? I think I was probably four, four, three or four. And I had an older sister, Daya Brunet, and she was uh, two years older. And uh, do you remember how many rooms the house had? Two bedrooms, kitchen, living room, dining room, and bathroom. That was it. Then Dad uh, made a bathroom in the basement and actually all the Italians had a kitchen in the basement and a kitchen upstairs. That was very common with the Italian families. Huh. And you had a telephone in the house back then? Yes, we did, and I'll tell you why. My dad worked for a company, and we were the only ones on the block who had a telephone. Oh, yeah? And all the neighbors used to come to use it. Wow. Mm -hmm. did, and did, so we charged them like, like 10 cents a call? I don't think we charged them at all. <laughs> <laughs> they just used it. Uh, were there any special items in the house that you can remember? I can remember a desk that uh, my sister and I had, and we decided we would write our names on the bottom of the desk where nobody could see them but us. I don't know where that desk is now. I think Mother gave it away. And I also remember the china cabinet that uh, now Auntie Sandy has. One, one day somebody's going to find the desk. It's going to be on, on TV on one of those shows. <laughs> Uh, what's your earliest childhood memory? My earliest childhood memory was standing on the kitchen table. My mother was changing me. And I often asked her about it later on because that I remember that clearly. The reason I remember it is because she must have been very upset. It had rained. My dad uh, excavated for a basement in the house we were living in. And it rained, and there was, was quite a bit of water. We were playing outdoors. My sister pushed me in, and I was floating. And she ran up and told my dad about it, and they came and picked me out of the water. And that's why I remembered. I knew that something was different because my mother was very upset. Wow. Describe the personalities of your family members. <clears throat> My father was funny. He was a joker. Uh, he liked to laugh. My mother was more serious. Uh, the one thing my mother always remembered, if you came to visit her and she knew that you liked a certain drink, a certain beverage, a certain uh, food, she would make that mm. for you. And she remembered whoever walked in that house, and we had a lot of relatives and a lot of friends. She always knew who liked what. And then your sister? My sister was nice. She was sweet. And um, uh, De Dea was type A personality. Good student, an all-A student. She took everything seriously. Um, and she was very kind to me. 
Uh, what kind of games did you play growing up? Oh, jacks, hopscotch, um, kick the can, uh, baseball in the street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, iPad. <laughs> <laughs> No, that, that yeah. they didn't have that then, but it was it was fun because all the kids it was it was a neighborhood where there were a lot of children our age, on our block there were a lot of kids our age. Uh, what was your favorite toy, and why? My favorite toy was my doll Maddie. Maddie. The reason we they call I called her Maddie was because she was scowling, and I loved that. It we were at. Every Christmas Eve, we spent at my grandmother's, and Santa Claus would visit Grandma's house. She had a three, it was three-story house, and we slept on, on the second floor. And when Santa came, we would slide down the banister because we were so anxious to see what. There were two carriages. One was with Dea's little doll, and one was with uh, mine. Hers was Smiley and mine was Maddie. Like M A D D. Mad, yeah. Mad, yeah. Yeah. And um, the thing was that uh, I used to scowl like that. That's why Santa Claus brought me that. Oh, funny. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. What was your favorite thing to do for fun? For fun? Oh, hopscotch. Just. Uh, uh, Jacks. You guys just, ever go to the movies at all? Oh, we always went to the movies, yeah. yes. Movie night was Monday night. Mm -hmm. And we'd come home from school, and the ladies during the winter time would hold, would, uh, uh, they didn't have a dryer, so they would hang their laundry in the basement. And it always smelled like, like laundry, mm -hmm. like wet laundry, and, and it's clean smelling. Mm -hmm. And these are memories that I remember. We always had the same thing to eat on Monday night, and then we hurried up and got in the car and went to the movies. Where, where was the theater? It was in, um, in Detroit, and the name of it was Stanley, Stanley Theater. It was just a little teeny theater, and one interesting thing was my dad had an old Maxwell, and he parked it in front of the theater because you could park it wherever you wanted and these two kids came up and said can I polish your car he said sure well we came out and it was shiny and beautiful and dad was real surprised that these two kids did such a good job the next day he looked at the other side of the car it wasn't done <laughs> <clears throat> What what what, uh, what did you eat on uh, Monday before the theater? On Mondays, I think we always had um, one of my favorites, fried chicken. Yeah. Mm hmm. Fried and mother made a wonderful fried chicken and French fries. Uh -huh. It was delicious. Uh, did you have family chores? Yes. And what were they? Uh, my sister washed the dishes, I cleared the table, she, no, I set the table, she cleared the table, she washed dishes and I dried them. We had no dishwashers at oh, that time. Yeah. Uh, what was your least favorite chore? I don't think I had any. Well, that, that's why you're in such good shape now. <laughs> I don't you're, know. You didn't complain. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did you receive an allowance? No. No, you just, that's no. part of the thing. Um, what was school like for you as a child? School was fun until I was in second grade and then I had a mastoid operation and uh, I was out of school for one year. Oh, one year? I didn't know A that year, long. yes. That was, it was very serious at that time. Yeah. They had no antibiotics. <laughs> and um, I lost a year of school so I was put back uh, instead of Going into third grade, I stayed in the second grade, and that was very devastating to me because I had made friends yeah. in the second grade, and they went to another room, and I had to stay in the second grade. Did people tease you? No, they never did. Yeah. Children, children didn't do that. Um, what were your best and worst subjects? My best subject was English. 
and writing. The worst subject was math. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and what was the name of your school? Coolidge School. Coolidge. Uh, what, what kind of uh, activities and sports or whatever did you participate in at school? Basketball. That was my favorite. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. It's because you're so tall. tall. For my age, yeah. I was very tall. I was the tallest in my class, so. Oh, wow. Everybody picked you for their team. Yes, okay. I was always a forward. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. um, do you remember any fads from your youth? Oh, my, yes. In high school, we wore penny loafers. Uh, we used to stick pennies in them, yeah. uh, one penny. And uh, we had um, our socks were fluffy. Uh, what's that? Angora. We had Angora socks that made our ankles look twice the size they were. Uh, we had Angora sweaters. And uh, we also had uh, baby blankets as babushkas. We huh. put them on our head. That was the in thing. Uh, what about hairstyles? Hairstyles long. Yeah? Long hair. Mm -hmm. uh, did you have any heroes? that you looked up to when you were a kid? Like movie stars or anything? Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh my. We liked, uh, well we all, we all liked him. Uh, Tyrone Power. Who was he? He was a movie star. Yeah? <laughs> and, <laughs> and now when I look back, he had kind of a baby face. He looked kind of, mm, he wasn't a real powerful looking man. He was kind of sissy, but we <laughs> liked him. <laughs> We went to see all his movies. Who else? Um, I, I didn't have, I didn't, that was about the only After Tyrone, one. he's hard to compete with. You're right. <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, what were your favorite songs? Oh, or, uh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, Dee and I were always singing. We had little records that we'd play. Oh, yeah? All, I can't. I can't remember one, you know, that uh, that I especially liked. We liked all of them. What about some of the family songs that you would sing later, or they were that were sung to you, like the Italian songs? Oh yes, tutu cavallo, mang mang muerte, butta sulla porta, butta tu barcon, butta you kill macaron. Were there were there uh, any others like like that? Oh yes. A tara tari pradi suit the ladder unio root. Keys to la chapat. Keys to la spella. Keys to la copat. Keys to la spellat. Keys to la fat quake. Keys to la majat. Keys to la pew pew w poke me. <laughs> Which is really not a real good story for no. a little one. What is it's it? It's about a rabbit. Yeah. You, ca you catch them, you cook them, one eats them. The other says, Pew, well, give me some also. <laughs> I mean, it's bad. <laughs> um, did you have any pets? No. Besides the rabbit that you oh, cooked? Oh, yes, a rabbit, and uh, I made the chickens my pets. Oh, yeah? Yes, we had chickens that laid eggs, and um, I'd go out every day to see if they laid eggs. I named every one of them, every chicken. What were some of the names? Oh, I can't remember now, but I know I remain. Yeah. I, all of them had little names that I had given them. Uh, when mother, um, you know, would kill a chicken to we have for dinner, uh, she'd always tell us it flew away <laughs> 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 because we liked the chickens. Yeah. They were little chicks when we first got oh, yeah. them. Yeah. So you had like a like a pen out. Oh yes, or a, yes. What do you and call that it? Coop. A that coop. yeah, it was a chicken coop, and that was very um, that was not uh, an um, what was I going to say? Uh, a lot of people had them, and yeah. it was not against the law right. to have live animals yeah. in your yard. Uh, were you ever mentioned in a newspaper? I wasn't, but my mother was. She had a flower. It was a um, very dark uh, uh, flower that she had purchased, I think from Europe. And the Detroit Times came to our home to take a picture of it because it was very unusual. Wow. Mm -hmm. Do you still have the newspaper? No. Yeah, we, should, we, we could probably find that. You think so? Mm -hmm. 
Well. How, how old were you, do you think, when that happened? Oh, probably, I don't know if I was a teen yet. Oh, so you were maybe 12, 10? Maybe, 10. So something in, like in that. So mid to late 30s, probably? Could be. Yeah. Oh. Um, let's see here. Who were your friends when you were growing up? Eleanor Curry, Pauline Doyle, um, what was her, um, let's see, who were those school friends? I had quite a few of them. Um, mostly Eleanor Curry. She was my very, very best friend. Did she live nearby? Oh, yes. Yeah, she was a few houses down. Uh -huh. Every morning, she would come to our house, and I liked Ulo's Patoot, which is you take sugar and an egg yolk, and you beat it, and you put in hot um, milk. Every morning, her mother would leave for work. My mother was home, so she would come to the house and make an oaf's batooth for me. And I reminded her of it years and years later, yeah. and she remembered. Wow. She said, oh, I remember that it was, oh, something or other. <laughs> How funny. Um, describe a typical family dinner. Always meet. Uh, potatoes or rice, always white Italian bread, always salad and vegetables. And did you all eat together? Oh yes, yeah. definitely. Who did the cooking? My mother. And what were your favorite foods? Fried chicken, <laughs> pork chops. Uh, my sister and I loved pork and beans. Uh, she was an excellent cook. Uh, we ate very a lot of different types of food. Hmm. We really did. Not just Italian. No. I haven't even heard you mention hardly any, any Italian food. Fried chicken. I know. I know. Uh huh. <laughs> uh, um, how were holidays like birthdays, Christmas celebrated in your family? When we were very little, my mother would invite all the children on the block plus their mothers. She would make a complete meal. For like a birthday? Yes. Yeah. For wow. our birthday, she would invite the mothers and the children. And we always had a dining room full of people for our birthdays. How about Christmas? Christmas, we would go to Aunt Teresa's for Christmas. Each one of the sisters took a, uh, a holiday. Mm. My mother had Thanksgiving. Mother would make uh, a fruit cake, and one year it was a large fruit cake. She put it in a roasting pan. That's how big it was. She was up all night tending to it. Oh. Then when it was done, she would wrap it with uh, towels. Uh, well, not towels. The um, Oh, the stuff you use uh, to, like to put on turkey and yeah. stuff. Uh, and soak it with uh, booze. Oh, yeah? And that would go, would, that would be in the cake, and everyone loved it. Wow. Hold on there. Then she would divide it for the relatives. Did your family have any special traditions? Well, we observed anything that was Catholic, mm -hmm. like Lent, we observed that. Um, all the tradi traditions of uh, family. Mm -hmm. No uh, no special or, or uh, unique thing that was, that was unique only to your family? No. Okay. It was always involved with all our cousins. Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. How is the world different today from what it was like when you were a child? When I was a child, we could play outdoors. Our mothers never had to worry about us. Um, everyone, everyone left their doors wide open. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You didn't lock your doors. You didn't. Uh, uh, you weren't afraid of anything. It, was, it wasn't a fearful world at all. It was very calming. It was. Hmm. Uh, it was a nice world, and people. Would, if you had a big garden, which we had, we would share with our neighbors. And if they had something that they felt that we would enjoy, they would, everyone would share. Who was the oldest relative you remember as a child? 
My grandmother. How old was she, do you think? My grandmother was, um, I think she was in, she may have reached 80. What was her name? That was um, Nane Louisa. And what do you remember about her? Oh, I remember she was cute. She'd come to stay with us. She would, uh, they lived on the east side and we lived on the west side. So my dad would go and pick her up. Was your dad's she, mom? No, my mother's your mother's mother. Mom. Okay. Mother's and um, they would, she would sleep with my sister and I. And she'd always tell us the stories to put us to sleep. And one was about a, a, the little bird in the woods. And we loved them. And of course, she'd change, and, and a yeah. bear would come up and almost get the bird. It was the cutest thing. We loved having her over. Um, what do you know about your last name, your uh, my, maiden name? My maiden name? Yeah. I know it means diminutive. Hmm. Diminuto means diminutive. Uh, but other than that, I don't know much about the name. An interesting story, though, when I oh. was in high school, <laughs> my math teacher could never pronounce it. There weren't many foreign uh, names in our school. Huh. And um, it was spelled D-I-M-I-N-U-T-T-O. And she would always start with Elva and then stop. So I decided to give her a note before uh, class and I wrote my name D and M E N E W T O E. And I said, This is the way you pronounce my name. Well, she was very proud of herself. She said, Elva D me new toe. And then she <laughs> smiled. She was real pleased with herself. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, um, <clears throat> what story? Uh, do you have any family stories that your parents or grandparents or other family members told you that were passed down from their families? Like about some, some relative or? There is a relative on my father's side. I love to do, I love basket weaving. And he was called Yakun Dai Jace, which means Jack of the Baskets. Mm. He would go from town to town. He would weave baskets, go from town to town to sell these baskets. He was very well known. This is in Italy? Yes, in wow. Italy. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, have any recipes been passed down to you from family members? Yes, and they're in a book <laughs> <laughs> called The Squeenies. <laughs> it's great to be a squeenie. Yes. <laughs> Are there any physical characteristics that run in your family? Like what? I don't know, like a uh, shape of your face or uh, an extra finger? <laughs> well, possibly my Roman nose oh. and my handsome grandson Greg has, he has that. Yes, that's probably our best trait. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Nato's uh, enjoying this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what was the full, what, what is the full name of your husband? Ezio Severino Asquini. And when and how did you meet? Our families were friends. And uh, he's a, an identical twin. And actually, I always thought of him as a brother. Oh. I thought of the twins as the, our brothers because we saw a lot of them. They were pr probably my parents' best friends. Uh -huh. So we would go on picnics together. We'd, we'd, we'd do a lot of things together. I do remember going to Rouge Park on picnics many times, and Ed had a little um, night that the kids would have on their boots. Wow. It was a little... Um, like a jackknife? A little jackknife. And he, he would put his initials and my initials on these trees in, um, in the park. And I often wonder, Eddie, if they're still there. Yeah. Uh-huh. That's wow. So what kind of things would you guys do when you would go on a, on a date before you were married? Oh, the movies. Yeah. That was a big thing to take the bus because he did not have a car. We'd take the bus to the movies and uh, 
He was very kind. I liked Ed a lot because he was a kind person and he was very um, religious. He was very religious and he also was a family person. And did he like Tyrone as much as you did when you? No, uh. no, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> but I liked him because he liked children. He, oh. If there's little kids around, he always would stop and talk to them. What was it like when uh, he proposed to you? Oh, let me see. We were on the swing on our front porch. We had a swing. And he said something about um, going on another date uh, somewhere, and I can't remember where. And I said, oh, I know what, what it was. My sister was engaged. And so he was, we were talking about Dee being engaged to Jim. And he said something about um, our, when, they're, when are they going to get married? I said, well, they, don't, they haven't set the date yet. And I said, and by the way, I said, are, are, we, are you thinking of getting married or not? Because if you aren't, um, then we should break up. That sounds like a woman. Uh-huh. That's what I told him. So what happened? So he said, well, how about Christmas? <laughs> I said, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so what happened on uh, Christmas then? Yes. So you guys got, you got engaged? My, my mother always had a big Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. That All the family would come at Christmas Eve. And he gave me a ring. Uh, how did you feel? Oh, I was real happy. Yeah. I was real pleased because I thought that was the one for me. And then where and when did you get married? We got married at uh, our church. It was, um, it was in Detroit. And um, it was October 11th, 1947. And his brother, his twin brother was best man. And his, one of his cousins, Tino Esquini, was um, usher. No, he wasn't usher. He was, um, yeah, he was. Who else was at our wedding, Eddie? Um, Fadrigo. Aldo Fadriga was in our wedding. And I had Josephine and my sister Dea and Teresa Minoli, who I don't see anymore. Uh, what, what memory stands out the most from your wedding day? Oh, the whole thing. The whole wedding, um, it was just, it was just a, a wonderful day. Um, what was the weather like? The weather was nice, and then it rained while we were at Alps Cafe where the reception was. It rained, and we came out, and the sun was out again. Hmm. Um, how would you describe no. no. A wonderful husband and a wonderful father. Uh, his main concern was his family, and that's what I liked about him. He was a family man. He loved the girls. Uh, he would spoil them. <laughs> I was the disciplinarian in the family. He wasn't. If I, if uh, the girls did something I disapproved of, I'd say, "Well, wait till Daddy comes home." <laughs> Then I'd tell Ed, and Ed would say, uh, I said, now go in there and you talk to him. And he'd come out and say, um, maybe they were right. I said, no, turn around and go back again. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what he was like. He really spoiled the girls. Uh, um, uh, what do you admire most about no, no. About being, being truthful about everything. Mm. He owns up, if he was wrong, he would admit it and he owns up to whatever, he, he wouldn't hide anything. What do you believe is the key to a successful marriage? I believe it's a commitment. 
And once you make that commitment, you don't veer from it. That's all. This, this is the person that you're marrying to us. That, that's it. Uh, what was it like when you found out that you were going to be a parent for the first time? Oh, it was exciting. And um, <laughs> Nana was so pleased because he loved children. He really loved them. We were so pleased. Um, we told everybody. Uh, we didn't keep anything a secret. We could call to everybody <laughs> <laughs> and told everyone. <laughs> uh, um, why did you choose your children's names? I liked Karen. I always liked that name, Karen, and I always liked Sandy, Sandra. And um, Karen Louise, that was my grandmother's name, Louise, Luigia. And um, Sandra Sue, I liked the girl across the street, Suzanne, and I thought Sandra Sue sounded real cute. Um, what was your proudest moment as a parent? My pride, proudest moment was when the girls picked uh, the right person to marry. Mm. And what did your family enjoy doing together? Well, at that time, you did everything together. Um, we did everything. Yeah. Where we went, the children came. Of all the things you learned from your parents, which do you feel was the most valuable? To be kind, to be truthful, trust in God. And what accomplishments are you the most proud of? Trying to be a good mother and raising two wonderful daughters. And then, finally, what is the one thing you want, what is the one thing you most want people to remember about you? That I was a nice person. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What else would you want people to remember you for? You know. That I had a good smell. <laughs> 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 uh, hold on a second. About my dad? Oh, t yeah, talk about uh, how we used to make wine and all that stuff. Oh, we would go to the um, train station and the grapes would come in from California. So everyone would be there and they would have trucks and stuff and they'd load up the grapes bring them home, on, uh, the, they were in boxes that were wooden boxes. And so we'd take them home, they would take the grapes, put them in a masher, and mash them. And then they would put them in what we called a turkli, which would be the, after they were in the barrels for I don't know how long. And the thing is that when they were in these barrels, we had fruit flies all over the house because these were done in the basement. Oh. Fruit fries were everywhere. Oh my gosh. And then they would put them in the tootkli and then the, we'd have, I think my dad would make like four barrels of wine a year. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you guys drank it all? Oh, we didn't, but uh, the relatives, yeah. you know. He, he made it for the whole, the whole family? No, just for us. Oh, just for you? Just for us, yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. oh. And then uh, each one of the uncles would make wine. And when we'd get together, sometimes if we go to a picnic, uh, they'd each bring their bottle of wine. And everybody knew whose wine that was. They didn't have to tell them that my wine or Uncle John's wine or Uncle Frank's wine, they, he should have changed his barrels because his barrels were not good, and the wine was not good. Oh. Uncle John's wine was good, and my father's was good. But Uncle Frank's wasn't too good. Huh. This is what I heard when we were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, um, uh, did, did you ever have any run-ins with the, uh, the mob at all, being Italian? No. Your, your, but, your father didn't? But my dad had a business partner. Yeah. And 
we, I was a teenager, no, I was already working, I think, and he was going to stop by and give him something, I can't remember what. It was late at night, and he said, I want to just stop by and give him whatever he had to give him. And um, the guy came out, I'm not going to name names, yeah. the guy came out and he said, Oliver, never do that again. My dad said, what? He said, never come up to my house, turn out the lights, and sit there. He said, never do that. Wow. So he was... He was connected somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yep. That's kind of scary. And I think Uncle Frank knew somebody who was... Yeah, yeah sure. Mm -hmm. uh, what about those Sicilians? You got to be careful with the Sicilians. <laughs> Right. But Uncle Frank was a Sicilian. He was real. He spoke for long. <laughs> Wait, so he's a spy. <laughs> he was a spy. <laughs> that a good one, Ed? I mean, he was, Uncle Frank was so nice. Oh, my uh, gosh. <laughs> wow. What were those things that you uh, used to have at your house when I was a kid, those Italian uh, things with the powdered sugar on them? <gasps> Crostoli. Yeah. They were good, and Daniela used to make wonderful crostoli. I remember sitting at your table with Non Olivo at his house. This is probably when I'm five. Okay. And somebody brought those up. And I, they, they were, were like delicious. eye level for, <laughs> for me. They're delicious. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, I re remember that about him and his cane. Oh, his cane. Yeah. 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 He, uh, what, when did he die, Eddie? When did Uncle, when did Nono die? Se 78? 79. 79? Yeah. So how old were you? At eight. I was eight. Oh, yeah. okay. Then you remember. Yeah. Uh, I remember going to his house in your car with the, the uh, angled window or windows in the oh back. okay that, that brown car you yes uh-huh so like i would sit in the back and look through those things oh how be darn yeah, yeah. my dad was voted the handsomest man on the block oh yeah yes he was oh tell me the story about him with uh, when he moved, came to the u.s and how he didn't speak English and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. When he the, came uh, to Canada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he, he came it with his, one of his cousins came across with him. And um, they, they decided that they wanted to work. And so they went to, um, I can't remember who told them that they could work in this place. Well, it was a, um, what do they call that? They cut out the trees, the lumber. Yeah, lumber, lumber mill. A lumber. And he said it was a great big room with a big furnace in the middle. And all the guys after, and he said it was pretty cold compared to Italy. It was quite cold. He said so he and his cousin decided, hey, they gave him a blanket and a pillow. And that you could lay on the floor because it was all wooden. And uh, they decided, we'll go up near the furnace because that's going to be nice and warm for us. So they quickly got up there and went right next to the furnace. He said in the middle of the night, they had to get up and go outdoors because it was so hot. So they actually slept there. They Oh, they slept there. This is, this is just when they showed up in, in Canada? Yes. Before they had found a home or anything? Oh, they had found a place to stay. Yeah. Italian people had taken them in. Why were they staying there at the the factory place? That's what they did. They, it was a lumber oh. thing, and they would cut the wood, and um, and I don't know what else they would do. Huh. Whatever they do at the lumber's, at the lumber place. What did they call them? Lumber Lum camps. L oh, the actual camp. Oh, so they were out. In they the uh, wilderness or whatever. Oh, yes. Uh -huh. uh, so, they, he, so he'd be off for a while oh, yes. working. That he'd be working. Uh -huh. uh, they and have TV shows about that now. Those big uh, uh, axe men. Those big, uh, oh, yes. That's what they that's did. That's what they did. That's what they did. And so they went. They would, uh, the first day that they were there, the first morning they got up, they went to the restaurant where everybody else went. You know, they'd follow where the guys went. 
and uh, they heard somebody say ham and eggs. He said they ate ham and eggs for a couple months. That's the only thing they could order were ham and eggs. Because they didn't speak English. Yet. They didn't speak English, <laughs> but they heard ham and eggs, and that sounded good to them. <laughs> <laughs> then he said he had a little stomach problem, and he wanted brioche, but they don't have. They, she said, I, I asked for brioche. They didn't know what I was talking about. So he said, I asked the guy to come out with me, and he said there were some stones on the on the ground. He said, and I took a glass of water and I threw a couple stones and was shh. The guy said, I know what you want. <laughs> he said, so he fixed me up. Nice. Uh-huh. Um, what was the first car that he had that, that you can My re dad remember? had was a Maxwell. Oh, the Maxwell. Okay. Maxwell, Maxwell or a Chevy, Maxwell. It was so big I can remember D and I would have to, when we wanted to talk to mom and dad in the front, we would get off the seat and take a couple steps to talk to him. So I would like to see, those. was that a huge car? Wow. A Maxwell, wasn't that the, it? Is that the picture you have where you're standing on the... No, that's a Chevy. That's a Chevy. That's a Chevy. Okay. That was the day that I was going for my mastoid operation. Oh, okay. I was seven. Wow. Do you re remember that? Oh, vividly. Yeah, it was scary. Vividly. Very scary yeah. for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, they, they knocked you out, though. Oh, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. But it was a dangerous surgery. Oh, that very dangerous yeah. because it was so close to the brain. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And my dad walked uh, walked me to the doctor. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. They didn't have a car. He didn't have a car at the... No, he did have a car. Children's cats. Children's what? Children's Cancer Association, probably looking for money. Probably. Children's yes, it was very scary for me, and um, I guess cancer. they said that my the whole side of my face had swollen, and there was a doctor two or three blocks away, and Daddy wrapped me up and took me to him, and he said he had, she has to be in the hospital right away. Wow. Do you remember uh, waking up from the surgery? You know what I do remember? I don't remember waking up, but I do remember um, when they put me under, I remember I saw a star. I saw a star that kept getting larger, larger, and it exploded. And then I woke up. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it took you a whole year to get better. Oh, yeah. That was very dangerous. Uh, were, were you in, uh, in bed the whole time? No, uh. not in bed all, the whole time, but... Um, I couldn't go to school. Yeah. When I did go to school, though, they had an open air room where you they would take you for like um, oh maybe twenty minutes. They would give you blank. They would give you milk and graham crackers, and then you would take a little nap. That's a, that's for the for the uh, teachers so they can actually relax. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I don't know, mm. but they had that. It was called the open air room. Uh. Well, that's all I got for now. Oh, darn. I thought I would be out a long time. Well, what, what else Hi. do you want to talk about? Goodbye. You want to talk about anything else? <laughs> no, that's all I know. No, hey, you know more than that. Those, those were good questions, yeah, though. Yeah, I know. Uh-huh. All right. Well, if I think of anything else, we'll do a repeat visit.